you, President Biden says he wants $80 billion for rail, and the other day he was talking about having trains that can go across the country as fast as a plane. I'm curious, as the Transportation Secretary, do you see a big demand for that, for a high-speed cross-country train? Well, there's definitely a lot of excitement around America about ensuring that the American people can enjoy a high standard of passenger rail service. Uh, like the President, I don't think Americans should settle for less than citizens in other countries uh, enjoy as a matter of course. Uh, now, the truth is uh, we have a backlog to deal with in addition to making sure that we can create new uh, routes and new capacity. And what's great about the scale of the American Jobs Plan is it's going to support both of those things, maintenance that we've needed to do all along and a chance to build new routes and expand what Americans can access. And about how long away are we from something like a high-speed cross-country train? Well, uh, again, we need to add a lot, first of all, to what we've already got. Um, but we can build new routes with the resources that are here. Uh, it's not the end of the story, but it's a, a fantastic beginning for a new chapter in American Rail. Josh? Um, thanks for doing this. As you know, there's been some criticism about the corporate tax hike. Some people have said that user fees should fund infrastructure. And I was curious, because user fees often cover the cost of maintenance and repairs, does this administration have a plan to cover maintenance and repairs for all the infrastructure that's being built? So, as you know, the, the jobs plan envisions this being covered through corporate taxes, and uh, the president believes very strongly that uh, this is not something that should burden uh, ordinary American families at a time when we've got so many corporations that have paid literally zero. And I also would argue that there's ample evidence that American corporations can be competitive uh, at a tax rate like 28 for the simple reason that they were extremely competitive at a tax rate like 35. If they could handle 35, surely they can handle 28, which was lower, uh, of course, is lower, would be lower than it's uh, been for most of my lifetime. Now, we've heard a lot of different ideas on what the pay for should be. Uh, I think this is a good time to take those inputs on board, but for, for my dime, it's pretty hard to beat the vision that the President put forward. Does there need to be a dedicated revenue stream? Well, look, we'll, we'll keep talking with Congress about this. Um, but as you know, uh, for some time, uh, we've seen general fund dollars going into supporting maintenance. So there are a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, but the best way I've seen, especially for these kind of uh, capital improvements, is exactly what's in the President's plan. Mike? Uh, hi, Mr. Secretary. Um, having covered local, state and local government for almost 20 years before coming here, I've seen the divisions that can erupt in, within a state, between regions of a state, over as they fight over limited pots of money to build these kinds of infrastructure projects. How, um, how involved do you think the federal government, the Department of Transportation, uh, the Congress, the White House should be in making the inevitable choices that are going to have to be made in terms of which bridge gets fixed first, which road gets widened, um, you know, there's obviously not enough money to fix everything and to do everything. And so how, how, how much of a role do you envision playing, or, or is it up to the states to kind of wage the wars they normally wage over this stuff? Well, I think there's always been a push-pull here, right, uh, because uh, communities often know what is most needed for them. And, and we welcome that, and I think our program design recognizes that. So I view our role as laying out the broad policy strokes. Even in the existing discretionary grant programs, you've seen this. So, for example, with uh, INFRA, uh, formerly known as FAST grants, we made sure that that, that first wave of uh, uh, calls for applications clarified that, that we're looking for uh, great projects that also bear on things like equity and climate that are important to this administration. And you'll continue to see that in the program design. Uh, of course, there's always going to be competition for limited funds. But the other thing I would say is uh, that competition is most ferocious when the funds are most limited. And so part of what we're trying to do here is make sure there's an ample uh, set of resources to go around so that uh, uh, some communities uh, may uh, be the most successful in, in rounds of competition, but that it, it doesn't uh, feel like other computers or, uh, communities are being left behind because we, we've got to make sure there's enough uh, to raise the bar in the country as a whole. And just one quick